and your husband. I was going to bring this up. Sorry, love. Oh, well, you can have it down here. Well, I've got some stuff I need to do. What stuff? Just a few jobs, that's all. Well, can't it wait? This is our first day as smug marrieds. I'm going to take tomorrow off and make it up to you. Well, I said I'd see Sean at lunchtime, tell him about the wedding. I could do with your moral support. OK, well, see how long these jobs take, eh? Well, about midday. OK, maybe. Um, you're not going to give your wife a goodbye kiss? Oh, listen, don't forget to take your wedding ring off before you go out. Right, well, good luck, bro. Try not to run anybody over. Hey, what are you going to do if Andy's at the flat? Well, unless he's got a good explanation, keep the living daylights out of him. But just try not to wear yourself out, eh, before our afternoon date. Don't worry. I'm a lot younger than you, remember? Oi! Thought you were going away for a few days. Oh, we came back early. Guessing you haven't heard about Andy. Oh, did him and Steph cut off OK? Never showed up at the airport. Left her high and dry. You are kidding. Some people, eh? Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to go see if he's on the flat. No, he's not there. How do you know? Well, I was just there. Radiators sprung a leak. I was just on my way to fix it now, so probably best if you stay out of the way till I've done it. All oh, right. If Andy turns up, do you want me to tell him to find you? Yeah, yeah, do that. What's it was saying the same this morning, um, Norris? You two are going to have to iron out your differences. It's not me and Norris who are the problem, it's Brian. 23 minutes in the shower this morning. 23 minutes! That is a little excessive. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm a sensitive person, Roy. Very sensitive. I need calm and routine first thing in the morning. All this stress is making me want to binge out on carbs. I know. Mm, come on. What's this gossip you've got for me? As Jason found a woman. Pat and I got married yesterday. We, we, we didn't want to tell everyone because of all the bad feeling over the development. I'm not everyone. Of course you're not. And, uh, I really wanted to tell you. So why didn't you? It was a low-key affair. Just Todd and Billy were there. You've always said I was family. You are. You're the first other person I've told. Apart from Liz and Steve. Oh, where's your wedding ring? She's staying in the house. She found out. Yes, in my room, which I've very generously not said anything about because I wanted to protect our friendship. I'm sorry, Sean. Well, I suppose I'd best say congratulations. Oh, don't be like that. Well, how'd you expect me to be? Look, I'm, I feel really bad about not telling you. So does Pat. Mm. Does he? Yeah, he's on his way here. He's just finishing a job. Like hubby's not coming. Well, he must have got held up. Oh, I thought you were off white carbohydrates. <laughs> it's stress. Oh, Brian. Amongst other things. Look, we'll uh, we'll, we'll convene this evening and have a, a council of war. Sounds like fun. Right, well, let's get off. Oh, sure. Can I be honest with you? I think you've made a big mistake. I think you've married a man who's going to make you miserable. Married. But you've made your marriage bad. Hello, love. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got uh, held up. We've got a leak at the builder's yard flat. Yeah. No, 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 don't come over. I'm right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can... Can we talk about this later, love? Yeah, bye, bye.
Well, I'm in love, you know, you give me a heart attack. You know, I've only been Mrs. Feeling one day, and all you've done is ignore me. Well, I've had a crisis to deal with. I thought it was just a leaking tap. Oh, the radiator tap has gone. It's been dripping all weekend, so I've had to take the whole of the living room carpet off. Well, why did Luke and Andy not say something sooner? Well, Luke's been away, and of course you wouldn't have heard about Andy. Him and Steph are planning to do a runner off to Portugal. What? Yeah, only he left there and all, disappeared off the face of the earth. He's not coming back? Doubt it. Well, we need the rent. What can I do about that, love? <sighs> you know, so far being married sucks. Come on, Eileen. Sean's upset. He went off on one in front of Norris, so now the whole street will know. Just, just take me home. I just want a, a hug and a glass of wine. I need to take this carpet to the tip. If you didn't want to spend time with me, why did we get married? I didn't. Come on, love. Let's go on. What thoughts are you about being married? We daft. <clears throat> it's just... Since this morning, it's felt like you want to get away. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Just a leak. Bad timing. I heard you cry out last night in your sleep. Oh, yeah? What did I say? You said no. Is that all? Well, you would say if you didn't want to... I love the bones of you, you silly woman. Well, sometimes I wonder. Listen, I know I've got a quick temper and sometimes I go too far. But deep down, I think I'm a good man. At least I hope I am. Of course you're a good man. Do you really think so? Silly. More importantly, you're my man. Go on, take the carpet to the tip. I can see it's bugging you. I'll put the tea on. Be quick as I can, then I'm yours all night. <laughs> See you in a bit, love. All fixed. Can I get up there? Ah, you know what, Luke? I'm so sorry I meant to phone you. We've had a flood upstairs. I've had to take up the whole carpet. You are kidding. Oh. So you're going to have to find somewhere else to stay for the next few days, I'm afraid. You know, most of Andy's stuff is gone. So it looks like he's left you in the lurch and all. Can't believe we're going so wrong. Well, don't be too hard on yourself. Some people are very convincing. He's not going to get away with what he's done to Steph. He'd be long gone by now. My advice? Let it be. Just wind yourself up chasing ghosts. You having trouble starting this? Want to take a look? Yeah, cheers. Pop it open. Well, it's a sorry state, isn't it? All your hard work, or nothing to smoke, literally. Yeah, sick of the sight of it. You and Kev decided what you're going to do with it, yeah? Probably sell it. How are you? Fix it straight up and bang it right in the market. I'd be happy to give you a call for the work. Yeah, well, we're a bit skint at the moment. Yeah, I know you're fixed, but uh, you wouldn't have to pay me till the insurance coughs up. You'd be out of pocket for a while. <laughs> Why would you do that for us? <laughs> I mean, Kev's hardly your best mate, is he? Well, truth be told, guilty conscience. And I was such an idiot, leaving him in that car on that night. I mean, he was out of his skull. Yeah, well, we well, left him there too. Thought he'd sleep it off. Yeah. When I think what could have happened, you know, if that fire would have spread, and all the stuff he's been through with Anna. So, anyway. The office there. If I were you, I'd bite his hand off. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, we'll go for it. Yeah? Yeah. Shall I draw you up some figures? Perfect. 
You sure? Yeah. Right, yeah. Hey, thanks for doing the quote so quick. You don't hang around here. Yeah. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, I am going to turn that burnt out shell back into a thing of beauty. <laughs> You're joking. Well, we may as well crack on, get it sold. He's not doing the work. Don't be too hasty, Kevin. He's not going to take payment until the insurance money comes through. Do you want feeling? I won't tell you it again. Talk about cutting your nose off to spite your face. Get away from my premises, now! Idiot. Hey! We're supposed to be partners. I don't take orders from you. All right, let's try and calm down, man. You only got him in here to wind me up. Oh, rubbish. You're just paranoid. You've trashed this business. You should be thanking me for trying to sort it out. I'm warning you. Shut it. We're paying the price for your daughter's stupidity. Hey, you. Hey, calm down. Leave it tight. Don't make much worse. Okay, I'm fully tired on, but you shouldn't have pushed me. Why don't you go home for a bit? You've done enough damage. You know how things have been lately. It's no wonder I'm on a short fuse. Just stay out of my way. Hello? Yeah, that's me. No way. Well, you must have made a mistake. That can't be right. Oh, please. Please, she can't do this to me. Teresa Fete nearly died of shame at Fresco's. Stood there queuing up with all my stuff on that conveyor belt thingy to pay, and they refused our debit card. Insufficient funds. What's the matter? Tell me what's happened. Look from the insurance company's phoned up. And? They're not gonna pay up. Well, how can they justify that? What have they said? Well. You know, they found evidence of arson. Yeah, well, that wasn't your fault. You know, you was the victim in all of this. Yeah, my keys was found there. They think I'm the one that's done it. And you still can't remember how they got there? Too drunk. If it wasn't for Tyrone giving me... It would have been a lot worse. How? Well, you know, like you said yourself, what if Tyrone hadn't given you an alibi? You could have gone to prison. What's wrong? I was dead grateful to him for covering for me. Some people would have given everything to keep him on side, but... You two are still bickering, are you? I punched him. What? Why? He was winding me up. God. I feel like my whole life's falling apart. Right, well, I can tell you one way that we can bring some more money in. I can go back to work. No. No, it's way too soon. No, it's that I was in there today. You know, I'm sat there looking at some daft magazine and all I can think is that these tables need cleaning. Look, I don't want you doing too much too soon. Why should you take all the strain? I'm ready to go back to work, honestly. Please, Kev, please let me do my bit. Honestly, we're in this together. Good news, I'll start back at the calf tomorrow. Well, that's good, if you're sure. Yeah. Look, I've been having a little think myself as it goes. I overheard a conversation in the Rovers and it gave me an idea. Right, come on. Look, if we smart, you could sort all our money problems out in one go. See, I knew you'd come up with something. It's a bit left field and I don't want you to say no straight away. I want you to think about it. Oh, come on, what is it? We're going to sue David Platt. Get him to pay compens. can do about getting you a new pair. All right, see ya. See ya. See ya. Look, maybe I can help. No, love, your pride wouldn't cover the cost of a pair of new skill shoes. I'll sort it out more besides. Right. Only if you're comfortable. Yeah, well, my comfort's neither here nor more, is it? There's a life belt floating past, you got to grab it. David! Yeah? Uh, me and you, we need a little chat. Oh, yeah, what about? I'd sooner not discuss it here, so do you want to come over to the cafe tonight when you're finished at the salon? Yeah, if you like. Yeah, believe me, it's not a case of if I like. Far from it. See you later. Yeah. Come on, you. Hey. No, nervous. Won't be easy facing down David Platt, mind you. Won't be easy standing up in court. Well, they might sell. Yeah, and then again, they might not. Like I said, we need the money, don't we? Yeah. You liar. What? I can't believe you was going to let me relive the worst day of my life and all the time you've got Sally's money burning an hole in your overalls. Yeah, I know all about it, but why did you have to let me hear it from Tim instead of you? I was waiting for the right moment. Oh, what, presumably as soon as David's cheque had cleared? 
Yeah, we can forget that now, because there's no way I'm suing him. Look, wait! Wait! Look, Sally's money changes nothing. It's seven grand. It's a sticky plaster. I used to be married to her. I didn't know how you'd feel. So you did a deal with your ex-wife behind my back? I made a mistake. Making a lot of them lately. Look, hold on. This isn't all down to me. It's not my fault the insurance won't pay out. You what? In the small print, a loophole. Oh, there's a loophole, all right. And it's strung round our necks. When was you going to tell me? I didn't want to worry you. Look, I thought I could turn things around. How? Oh, you can't even afford to pay this staff. Where are you going to find the money to rescue the business? He's getting seven grand off his ex. It's just to tide you over, isn't it, so you could cash in on me injuries? Anna. No, he wants me to sue David Platt. Go to court, stand there, answering questions about the one day that I want to forget more than anything else. All to save your flaming empire. It's the only thing I could think of. But I didn't even want to suggest it. But you did, Kev. You did. Wouldn't you let me go through with it and all? Wouldn't you even have to get in Sally's money? Wouldn't you? Look, I don't want another owl, mate. No, me neither. But we need to sort this. We can't carry on as we are. Not with half the business closed. We're gonna have to cut our outgoings. Uh, tell me something I don't know. There's only one way I can think of, though. It's the last thing I wanted. Why well, didn't want to be a boss in the first place? No. I've done a dirty work. Done everything. It's the least I can do. Good. I mean, there's one obvious candidate. Mm. Were you and him being so close and all? Mm. Hang on, who are you on about? Freddy. Been here five minutes, last in, first out. No! No, it is not his fault we're in this mess. A lot of this is down to Sophie, so when she gets back, she should get her cards. No, I'm not sacking my old daughter. We have managed without someone in that office for years. Freddy's a trained mechanic. Freddy can live off his pension. Sophie needs this job. But there won't be a job for anyone the way you're going. You're running this business into the ground, and I'll lie to the police for nothing. What, what's that got to do with anything? Because you owe me, Kev. Which means we start doing things my way. No, I'm really sorry for not telling you about the money. Your ex-wife's money. Look, it's humiliating taking cash off Sally. Oh, I'm going to work. There's something else. Oh, well, do you know what Corsa is? Because he's always blaming something else. <sighs> Brilliant. Hiya. Kevin, just to say that we're all set for Rosie and Sophie. Ah, oh, thanks. We really appreciate it, don't we? Oh, we don't mind. And you don't need the extra hassle and what with your situation. Bye, Sam. Right, go on then. What was you going to say? Because you can't make this day any worse. It's Tyrone. He's really angry about the insurance. He's saying he might go back on his alibi. He said that. Unless I sack Sofa. Look, I'm going to speak to him again. What, and make it worse? No, if I were you, I'd just stay away from him. We work side by side. Kevin, you wind him up anymore and you're finished. We all are. More paperwork. Oh, and we're out of milk. Someone's been up to no good. <laughs> More like a weapon than a shoe, that thing. <laughs> hey. hey, lads, what's the funny? I'll crack on with this. Said it'll be ready for 12. Uh, I'll go and get the milk. Look, just in case you're wondering if I've changed my mind. Look, mate. You're gonna have to sack Sophie. It's nothing personal, I just can't see any other way. When up was sick, you did all you could to make things right for her. Didn't matter what phase of the bank said, because she's your little girl. Hang on. Are you comparing my hopes cancer with some spoiled girl on a stupid holiday? I already owe you a smack, Kev. Don't push it. I'm just trying to do right by my family. What, and let my kids carry the cat? No way. Sophie stays. And if you don't like it, carry out your little threat. But the minute you talk to the police, let's see what happens. And what's that meant to me? Well, you think they're going to turn the blind eye to you giving a false alibi? You're up to your neck in this. Don't tell me you've been excluded. This just gets better and better. Nine. On the dot. We'll go from there. Now beat it. Putting up a shelf. He's got the gift of the gab, that one. Smart, too. Mm. Slippery. You'll regret it. Did you notice? No mention of Dad. Kid like that could go either way, depending on the company he keeps. 
You want to save him? Hey, I could teach him what's what. Better than any Bobby on the beach. Keeping you up. <clears throat> no, it's just a bit boring. What's more exciting, stealing that medal you've got in your pocket? I don't know what you're talking about. You can't kid a kidder, kidder. You don't miss a treat, you do you? No. And you can't kid Ken either. Like he's not going to notice it's gone and like he's not going to know one of us took it. Put it back. We'll say no more about it. We could get on, you and me, and you could lay in a lot. you just got to remember who's the boss. What is it you want from me? I haven't quite decided yet. Older bloke, 15-year-old lad. Are you grooming me? Don't push it. Had to say it. You're cheap labour. Oh, I get it, so you're tight. And you're cheeky. Put the kettle on. Do something useful. See, it's not just a brew you want, though, is it? Time will tell, young Seb. Time will tell. Still hasn't answered. Can't think where he's got to. Yeah, the thing is, I've got to be somewhere else by seven. At his age, I'd have killed for an opportunity like this. Youth of today. I am sorry to interrupt yet. Oh, I... Okay. Uh, did you decide on the cupboards? Uh, yeah, I need to order them well in advance, you see. Um, can it wait till tomorrow? Sure, yeah, but the sooner the better. So we Why don't you sort anything. that out, Ken? I really should be getting No, that. have another drink. Oh, maybe another day. Good to see you. I'm so sorry about this. Ken. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry, Ken. Have I just messed something up for you? You have done nothing wrong at all. Yeah, it's coming along. Oh, yeah, yeah. You look like I feel Ken. Oh, just one of those days. Men, honestly. What now? Oh, well, Luke tells me he's taking me on a romantic break. I get all excited. And then it turns out he only wants to do summer else when we get there. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, Tracy, I've got bigger fish to fry right now. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? Was this for, um, was this for Valentine's? You know, I've booked me and Eileen into a lovely little restaurant. Not as fancy as a triple white, but me, I'm going to have a nice big plate of ribs. And she can have poached fish or whatever it is that women eat. I suppose my point is, we both get what we want. You sure you can't salvage this trip? I mean, I presume he knows he's in the doghouse, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you can be sure about that. Well, then, he'll be bending over backwards to make it up to you, won't he? Oh, well, I suppose, yeah. I would tell him soon, though, just in case he cancels it. Do you know something, Pat? You're right. Yeah. Thanks. My pleasure. Do you fancy a brew? I would love one. <laughs> OK. I hate sleeping on my own. Oh. I hate being away from you, love, but it's two weeks' work. You want swans? You want the accent swans, <laughs> I just told you, two weeks' work. Hiya. Tim said you're taking over the round. Hey, girls, great idea, this female window cleaning company. Brilliant. Yeah, too right. The amount of times over the years I've woken up to some hairy-faced bloke staring through my windows, fagging one hand, ragging the other. Good luck to you. Hey, maybe we should put that on the flyers. Female-run business. What, maybe a photo of me like this? You just can't help yourself. Mm. Ladies. Ugh. Ignore him. Nothing to do with us anymore. Uh, pipe, please. Make that too, love, please. I'll get these. Oh. Softening me up for a rent rise. <laughs> Just being neighbourly. Who are you texting? Leanne again? Because she won't reply. No, oh, Aidan, actually. You know, my boyfriend, remember him? Clearly sunning himself in Spain while I'm slogging me picking guts out here. Oh, pardon me for breathing. So I hear you're planning a little trip to Bristol to see young Andy. It's not a social visit. Not after the way you broke Steph's heart. What's it got to do with you? Trace has put you up to this, hasn't she? <laughs> Didn't have you down as a go-between. Thanks, love. And I've been accused of a lot of things, Luke, but playing Cupid is not one of them. Well, 
Thanks for the pint. Pleasure. Oh, and tell Tracy she can still come if she wants. Hmm. I've never really been a flower person, to be honest. No way. And here was me imagining you skipping through a glade of bluebells come the springtime. No typical bloke, I'm afraid. Only on anniversaries, when I'm in the doghouse with the missus, and even then, I buy them from the petrol station. Oh, I always feel so sorry for flowers at petrol stations. Oh, here we go. Well, it must be hellish for them, surrounded by exhaust fumes day in and day out, choking on noxious fumes, unable to breathe freely as nature intended. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, you could always pop up the M6 services and set them all free. I think you have a beautiful way of thinking, Mary. Thank you. Mother often says I'm a silly, sentimental fool. Starting to like the sound of your mother. Should bring her in. So, what about red roses? You can't go wrong with the classics. Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Trace? For Eileen? How would I know? You're a florist, aren't you? No, I mean, why would I care? Oh, you could throw caution to the wind and... Try something on the quirky side, like a, like a chili plant. This will come up lovely springtime. A dozen red roses will be fine, Mary. Thank you very much. <laughs> special occasion? Uh, well, I'm turning over a new leaf, so I shouldn't need a special occasion to buy flowers for my wife, should I? Oh, please. Pass the sick bucket. I am so sorry. She has had a falling out with her young gentleman. Oi! I can't hear you, you know. You were supposed to. He's still off to Bristol. Sounds like he wants to give Andy a right going over. Yeah, well, I'm not interested. Uh, curly mm. ribbon or as it comes? As it comes, it'll be fine, Mary. Thank you. I'm surprised you're taking it so well, though. I mean, you know why I'm buying these flowers for Arlene, right? Come on, it's Valentine's week. If I suddenly announced I was going off on a wild goose chase, spending God knows how many hundreds of pounds in the process, I wouldn't just be out the door, I'd be spending the weekend in casualty. Lucky for Luke, you're the easy-going type, so... <laughs> easy-going type? Think you might be misinformed there, love. Mind you, the mood Luke's in, he'll want to batter Andy if he finds him. But I don't fancy his chance as much, not with that gammy leg of his. All right, you two. Decided to go to Bristol after all, Trace? Uh, no, actually. We decided that we'd stop around here because we'd have more fun. Ah. Trace, since when did you and her get so chatty, chatty, pally, pally? When I work at number one, I chat to her most mornings. Not as bad as she's cracked up to be. You're a bad judge of character. <laughs> I must be. Married you. Oi! <laughs> anyway. What's with the rules? He's trying to butter me up because you're going to abandon me for the valleys of Wales. Hmm? No. I'm buttering you up because I'm staying. Eh? Yeah. The money was rubbish. If I'm going to be skint, I'm going to be skint here with you. Oh, get in, husband! It's her birthday. What have you bought her? Ah. A long time since I was a teenager, but from memory, I would say you're going to be well and truly done. Back in your bedroom on your PlayStation. I don't know what I should get her. But everything costs so much. Oh, and here is the birthday girl. Many happy returns, babe. Thank you. Uh, you've not forgot that you're going to have tea, have you? He spoke of nothing else all day. Uh, no, 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 I've not forgotten. <laughs> and uh, uh, where are you going now? Uh, just agree, he's got me a present. Oh, that's nice of him, isn't it? Yeah. You won't believe what Mum and Kev gave me. But I'll catch you later, yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Faye. You are seriously going to have to up your game. Yeah, maybe this will help. Cheers. Spend it wisely, young man. Well, this is a building site, you know, not a catwalk. Yeah. I mean, we're going labouring, not clubbing. Look, these are the oldest clothes I've got, all right? No wonder you're always skint, you. Good morning to you, Mr Magpie. How's your good lady wife and your delightful children this fine day? Uh, Brian, what the hell was that? I, I was saluting my friend, the magpie, staving off ill fortune. You know what you say, Bray? One for sorrow. One for the nut house, more like. <laughs> you, whoa, you, you can't believe in all this mumbo jumbo. Well, I've been lucky so far. Why take the risk? Indeed so. It's a fool who gambles with the fates. <laughs> a load of. All right, all right. You're telling me you believe in, like, 
UFOs and ghosts and um, the Loch Ness Monster. Well, not necessarily the Loch Ness Monster, but all the rest. We're real nothing in, nothing out. <gasps> I'm sick of this! Whoa! Whoa! Hey! What's the problem? It won't budge! Now the flaming screwhead's all chewed up. Well, no wonder you got expelled if that's how you go on in woodwork. <sighs> this is not about a screwhead, though, is it, sir? Your phone's been going on and off all morning. You haven't even bothered to look at it. I thought I'd speak to her. Faye? Her old boyfriend's back. You know, her kid's dad. So what? She's... she's dumped you? Not yet. Just like me at your age. Hot-headed. Jumping to conclusions. It'll do you no good. I've learned the hard way. I start to do. OK, well, once you've calmed down, you need to talk to her, OK? OK. Uh, guys, I'm no expert in plumbing, but should that oh. be doing that? He must have gone through a heating pipe. Seb, get a saucepan. Uh, what's all the racket? Is everything OK? Great, not Trace. I think we've gone through one of your water pipes. You're going to have to turn your supply off downstairs. Right, but can you fix it? Yeah, take a little while. You will have water upstairs, though. Oh. I'm really sorry. The flat. This day is fast turning into one of those days. Can it wait till tomorrow, Luke? Uh, I don't think so. The, uh, the electric keeps going on and off, and there's a weird groaning sound coming from Steph and Andy's old bedroom. Mm, sounds like old times. Not that kind of groaning. Hey, you know what? Tina used to live there. So, maybe it's a ghost. Hey, Pat, why don't we get your little uh, crucifix out and do an exorcism, hey? Tina, Tina, is that you? Be gone, love, be gone. It's not funny. No, it's not. Mm. What's the sound like, Luke? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's like a, a hammering sound with a weird, high-pitched, whiny moan. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, that's Michael. Yeah, he's come back to haunt you. He's always had it in for you, hasn't he? Shut up, Mum. <laughs> we'll be over there in a little while. Thanks, Luke. And the Lord said, let there be light. Used to be an altar boy. I won't get too carried away. I've come on before. See, that's the noise I was talking about. You see, where's Derek Ikora when you need him? You're a gullible scout, so go and take a look. Hey, say hello to Tina for us. Well, it'll be the pipes. Yeah, the ghostly pipes of Michael's ice cream van. Playing green sleeve from the underworld. Shut up, Todd. There'll be a leak, right? And the, somehow the water's got into the wiring, so... Oh, we see there's a film in this. It'd be the, uh, the Weatherfield Haunting. It'd be like Amityville with Hot Pot. Let's <laughs> give it a rest, Todd. Pat? You all right? Yes, lads, thank you. Thanks for coming. I'm not sure why I'm here, to be honest. They, they said I need an appropriate adult. <laughs> it's the first time I've been accused of being one of those. Why don't you call your mum and dad? Well, if you know what my dad is, you know more than I do. And my mum's got the twins. You know, she's just being bits anyway. Hey, fair enough. So, why did you do it? I don't know. I, I, I didn't plan it. You know, I just, I just, I just, I just saw him. Yeah, well. I guess you're not the first jealous teenager to do something daft. But trust me, Seb, there's no way to settle scores. No? No. I mean, don't get me wrong, anger can be a really good thing, but you need to learn to channel it. Well, like you. And what I'm saying to you is, a cool head will always come out on top. And that's what you need now here, is a cool head. All right? Check those, Seb. Make sure there's none of them are cracked. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? He's doing a job for me. He's a thug. He's a kid. If I sacked everyone that got into a fight, I'd never finish a job, would I? It wasn't a fight, it was a vicious attack. It's completely unjustified. What if you go and do something like that again? He won't. I'm keeping an eye on him. Oh, well, with you as his mentor. He works for me. That's that. Look, I was out of order, all right? I'm sorry. Save your breath. The damage is done. What was Faye? That's none of your business. I've told Faye she hasn't to see or speak to you ever again. 
All right. Just been a good fight looking for you. Are you sorting it today? Uh, yeah. I could do with a hand, though, if you're free later. Ah, uh, no, sorry. I promised uh, Billy we'd go out for the day, so... OK, well, Seb, you can give me a hand. No, no, I can't. I've got to go see my solicitor. Not to... Not scared of Michael's ghost, are you? Shh, stupid. It's quicker with two, that's all. Now, Seb, you take those, mate. doing here? Brought you a coffee. <sighs> Promised my mum I'd look after you while she was away with Auntie Julie. Look after me, and she scared me to death. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you probably thought it was Michael. Oh. <sighs> anyway, I thought you were away with Billy. No, no, he stood me up. He's doing a exorcism. Uh, flaming idiot. Yeah, you could say that. Drink? Uh, yeah. Yes, very kind of you. Kind. Me. I don't think so, will it? Everything all right, Pat? Things haven't been all right for a long time, Billy, and I doubt they ever will be again. Anything I can help you with? Mm. Thank you, but... Saying a few Hail Marys is not going to fix this. Mm. Oh, I'm sure things can't be that bad. According to your lot, definitely in the top ten. Um, do you want to? Do you want to go somewhere where we can talk in confidence? Hey, hey. you two look very uh, cosy. Oh, just having a chat. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, let me guess. I bet you're after the number. Have a good exorcist. What are you on about now, you? Where have you been? Why haven't you been answering my calls? I've been worried sick. I I'm sorry. Something happened? You look terrible. I'm, I'm just tired. Right, well, I've been ringing you because I wanted to tell you that I've spoken to my dad. About us, about the baby, and he's fine with it. Daniel, I need to talk to you. What about? Um, I'm not in here. Can, I, can we go back to, to the flat, please? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> I borrowed this off Sarah and hid it in the flat. I thought you'd suss it out, but you totally fell for it. You should have seen his face. It was priceless, wait there. He was bricking it. Right, look at this video. Hello? Hey, Pat, don't. You do, you know, I was just having a laugh, Pat. Laugh. Watch you punch your lights out. Laugh. What is wrong with you? Me? He's the one with the problem. Yeah, yeah, he is. I just cut him some slack. Hurry up. Should have been in Ken's 20 minutes ago. You're the one who's running late, mate. Yeah, well, I didn't sleep that well last night. Yeah, well, if you'll spend all night on your Ouija board. You what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pat's into the spirit world, didn't you know? It's not what his favourite movie is. 
Ghostbusters. Ah! It's still funny now, is it still funny now? You carry on. And you'll be laughing only at the side of your face. <sighs> Mutt. You see that? Uh, am I missing something here? The guy's a nutter. Come on, you were asking for asking it. Asking for it. Look, I know he overreacted. Overreacted? Billy! Look, I warned you to back off. He's under a lot of stress at the moment. Yeah, well, he's not the only one now. I'll tell you what. He can find some other mutt to do his work for him. Cos I'm not gonna do it! <sighs> Shit, do you know what? It's kind of fun living here. He's still there. Where's Grandad? Out. Well, what time do you knock off? About half an hour after I do these flame and work tops. Why? No reason. Could you do that outside, please? Only it'll solve my asthma. Why'd you never pick up? Right. I'm gonna hide the money behind the clock. Everyone's out tonight at my show, so it'll be safe to come. Spare key's where it always is. Text me. Let me know you got this. What are you doing here? You won't send me. Look, I know I upset you. Sorry. But I was only joking. Right. No, honestly, I was. I think you're a great little player. And you've got guts. I'd be terrified playing in public. Well, I accept your apology. You can go now. Yeah, well, uh, I promise your mama wouldn't leave without you, so... Ah, oh, thought you were at rehearsals. Yeah, we're just about to go back. She forgot a resin. Resin. Uh, you are coming to my show, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on. Nice to see you putting your back into it. Thank you. I've been hard at it all day. Especially since your Seb didn't turn up. You mean you're working solo? Yeah. Oh, great. So now it's going to take even longer. Of course, you could always try speeding things up a little. <laughs> what are you saying, Ken? I want to go slow. I'm saying, for the last two weeks, I've been living on a building site. All I wanted was a new kitchen. It should have taken a week at the most. Oh. Experts on kitchens now, I can. No, no, but you don't need an expert to let you know when you're being, uh... What, Ken? What were you going to say? Ripped off? Is that what you're saying? That I'm dragging this job out to make a few extra quid? Let me tell you something. I could do without the job completely. I've got enough on my plate as it is. How about this, Ken? I'll pack up my tools, leave you in peace, eh? Don't you dare! I'm not having it left like this. Well, then you're going to have to pay. Because I'm going to have to hire him more labour. Oh, so now the solution's more money, is it? I should have seen that one coming. You know, you're lucky I employed you at all after all that business with the flats. People told me I shouldn't trust you, and I'm starting to think they were right. Magic word? Large. I'll get that. Not if it comes with a homily. Let me tell you, your little boyfriend was very lucky this morning. But for Eileen, I'd have knocked him into the middle of next week. 480, please. Well, then, um, I'll mark his card. Back in harness. First thing tomorrow at Ken's, 8.30 on the dot. Yeah, no point. I'm on my way round there to tell that second-rate Stephen Fry exactly what he can do with his work tops. There's another one with no respect. Yes, the blessed Kenneth Barlow. Whatever else I am, Billy, I'm a craftsman. I can tool oak, marble, granite with the best of them. That clown wants a five-star service and he wants to pay a one-star fee. Enough. Yeah, maybe just sleep on it. What did I tell you about homilies? The day you break sweat for minimum wage is the day you can lecture me. Hello? 
You haven't seen Amy on your travels. Beth. What? No. Well, if you do. Well, I'm looking for Daniel. Well, I'll save you some time. You're not going to find him in there. Oh, that's a machine. OK, Amy, we know you don't want to do the concert, but... Searching high and low. They had to start the concert without you. I'd have only mucked it up. No, darling, you wouldn't. You would have smashed it. You're brilliant, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I better phone Luke and let him know I found you. What's happened? Uh, I just dashed over here to tell him where to stick his job. I came through the back door about ten seconds before you arrived. They found him here. He must have had another stroke. He rang an ambulance. Well, I've just got here. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, ambulance, please. Number one, Coronation Street. Yeah, it's my dad. I think he's fallen downstairs. Check his pulse. Do something. OK, uh, we're looking now. Dad? Dad, can you hear me? I've got a pulse. Hold on in there, Dad. The ambulance is on its way. Where are you going? What's in the bag? Are oh, you talking to me now, are you? It's a bit late. Have you quit yourself? Yeah. Smashed the glass. Where's that stop? What's up, Pete? Eccles? Is it Ken? Yeah. One, three. One, two, three. Dad. Dad's had a fall. Pat found him. I found him at the bottom of the stairs. I think he might have had another stroke. So the lights. Who's going with him? Uh, we'll keep Amy. I'll go. Uh, you two, you follow me on. Hey, Ted, take the cab, yeah? Oh, thanks. Hey, are you all right to drive? Of course I am. I want to give them the keys otherwise. Uh, Amy, um, I'll give you a call as soon as I know what's happened. Say goodbye to Grandad, eh? He'll pull through, won't he, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah, of course he really has to. We spend more time in here than we do at home. That's right, Tracy. You think positive. That's great. Well, at least you didn't get fractured ribs and all the rest of it like last time. Concussion and a punctured lung. Hey, um, I wonder if they know about the DNR order. I'll write him off, I would. No! Peter, that is not what I'm doing. I, I just want to make sure that we've got everything right. It's what he wanted. Yeah. Won't it be on his records? Yeah, probably. Oh, you know, you don't have to stay. No, I don't mind. No, really. You get back to work. I'll let you know if anything happens. Okay. Um... Nothing you need? No, uh, Daniel said he's going to bring a bag of Dad's stuff, so we'll be all right. Okay. Any word from Adam? Oh, yeah, uh, he sent me a text. He said he's getting on the next flight from Canada, but he's not picking up his phone now. Well, 
She's on a plane. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Daniel. Um, any news? Still unconscious. You got any idea what happened? I've not heard anything. Probably another stroke, like you said. Do you need a key to get into the house? No, no, I'm, I'm going up there. Thanks. It's another stroke. So are you. You never know when your time's coming, do you? Gotta live for the day. As for your tea, your mum left the lasagna in the freezer. Well, uh, we, we're going out, aren't we? Come on, lads, I can't eat it all by myself. I'll get it. Just trying to be civil. Think of it as a peace offering. I, I don't know. I... Come on, I thought you guys specialised in forgiveness. It's the uh, police. They want a word with Pat. Oh, you were great, love. Oh, thanks. But I can't seem to get that Radio Weatherfield app off my phone. Mind you, I've learned a lot about pigeons and allotments. <laughs> now I'm off for a shower. Yeah, Mum, I was, um, I was so proud of you. I hope that one day you might be proud of me. Oh, I am proud of you, Rosie. I'm going to go to the pub with Sophie. Do you want to come? Yeah, I'll come later. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, yeah, this is Sally Metcalf. Weatherfield General? Um, well, uh, yeah, I had, um, I had a mammogram about, um, Three weeks ago, on the on the tenth. Well, what kind of mistake? <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. Are you saying that my cancer's come back? Why am I always the one who has to deliver bad news? What's going on? The police have just arrested Pat. Attempted murder. No, well, I'm busy. I've got lots to do. Listen, Todd, I get one phone call. And you wasted it on me. They think I did it. Well, you've got a nasty temper on you, haven't you? Prone to uh, outbursts of violence, I'd say. Listen to me. I've got an alibi. I was working at Luke's, only nobody saw me, so I can't prove it. Sorry. You're on your own this time. Hey, but Pat... Good luck. <sighs> Tools I needed to finish a job at Luke's flat. You've not even called an ambulance. Oh, I just got there. There wasn't time to call an ambulance. And you were installing a kitchen for Mr Barlow? Yeah. How is it going? What? The job, how is it going? Yeah, fine. No problems. No problems. And your relationship with the client? Ken, I like Ken. So why did a witness tell us you were heard having a heated argument with Mr Barlow on the day of the attack? It was nothing. Tell me about it. Look, I arrived late, we had words. Listen, truth be told, I was on my way to tell Ken I'd had enough and I was quitting the job. And you were found standing over the body at the bottom of the stairs. Um, I was thinking that I may go down to Oxford for a couple of days, see if that place on the MA is still available. You can come too, if you want. Don't think I can get the time off work? Yeah, I ought to think about getting back to Canada myself. Oh, do you know something? I'd love to get away for a few days, you know, go somewhere Whoa, quiet. just, just hang on here. Dad's still in hospital, he's not even conscious. Whatever happens with Pat Phelan, we're all staying here until we know Dad's better, OK? Nobody's going anywhere. Uh, 
Can I buy you a drink? No. I'm, um, I'm waiting for Billy. So you were recording me all the time, eh? Must have been hilarious. Mm. I got you off an attempted murder charge. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Now, why would you do that? Well, I think... My boyfriend has helped me develop a model compass. And I can't say I'm happy with it. Well, I hate to say it, Todd. But I owe you one. No. No. Let's just keep things the way they were. I don't like you. I don't trust you. And I'm watching you. Okay. Stairs. Just so you all know, I happen to like Ken. And I hate the idea that someone tried to do him in. Hey, it's a hospital. Hi, yeah. Yeah, speaking. Oh, thanks for telling me. So, looks like Dad's recovering. They're gonna bring him out from under sedation in the morning. <laughs> Good old Ken, eh? Maybe now we'll find out who tried to kill him. <laughs>